awesome. Okay, you ready? Okay, so we will switch over. Yeah, you'll we'll both be on Zoom. We're gonna switch over to the chatting view and hopefully it'll switch over. So I'm gonna do it now. Ready? Ready. Hello. Hello and welcome to Sonic Sorcery. I'm Stefan Key, your Sonic Sorcerer, and I'm super stoked about this very special episode today on the Sonic Sorcerer YouTube channel. Um, we're going to talk about the Shamanic Portals template, like the, the recent co-creation that um, I did together with the amazing Sky Ortiz, aka Fluorescent, and it's my great honor and pleasure to introduce guy to you um mm. he's an amazing artist and uh, light bender and um yeah just an incredible person to work with it's has been such a pleasure to be on this journey um we started out actually as students uh yeah. or like teachers to student uh, relationship like sky was part of the academy for sonic sorcery and um this is how we got to know each other. And then I got to know a little bit about his art. And he has his own YouTube channel, Fluorescent, where he's doing amazing sound healing, ambient music based on um, interactions with plants, actually. Um, and he creates his beautiful animations. And this is how we got into connection. And I invited him to create my album cover. And, and this is how we got into this kind of relationship of working with sound and visuals together. Right. And we're going to get a little bit deeper into this in a second. Um, I just wanted to share briefly my intention behind the template. And then I'm going into uh, how Sky came into the project and how he can then share, you know, how this journey unfolded for him because it was a very big surprise the way that it turned out for both and us. the way that it was exactly and the way that it was originally intended. I'm just going to check the chat. If someone is here, okay, for now it's just us. That's great. And um, just checking the sound. Yeah, awesome. Okay, good. good. Everything working fine. Yeah, it's my great. first time doing OBS, so if something will probably go man. wrong, but we'll figure it out as we go through. <laughs> well, it's, it's all working perfectly. Yeah. So basically, the intention behind the Shamanic Portals was, first of all, create something for beginners, mm -hmm. very simple something that can be used in Ableton Live Lite, which is like a version that you get for free if you purchase gear and stuff like that. So it, it came with limitations, but I also wanted it to be simple. I realized um, if I wanted to have something for performance, especially for beginner, it needs to be like simple and not too many channels. And at the same time, I wanted it to be um, magical enough and, and complex enough so that even if it, it appears to be not too much it is actually a lot <laughs> and so I, I came up with this idea okay i want to have like some sort of sound journey drone generator with different layers so i had this idea of having like drones atmospheric sounds and nature sounds and i wanted to cover the whole frequency spectrum so this was kind of like the technical aspect of it in terms of okay we need like low drones mid drones and high drones and then atmospheric sounds and field recordings and then I was thinking like, uh, okay, so what is it going to be about? And then the whole idea was um, to work with the concept of parallel realities um, because I believe that there are other realms out there um, that exist and that we can tap into. And some of them might be, from a linear perspective, be perceived in the past and some might be perceived in the future. But they're all like mm, somehow interconnected and we can access them. We can access them through meditations, through dreams and through intention. So the whole idea is that, you know, we create our reality based on our state of being and everything is frequency and resonance and harmonics. So um, if we want to change a different reality, we have to change the frequency, basically. Or let's say that if we are connecting with a certain frequency, this is an effect because everything affects everything and, and frequencies are information. So I wanted to tap into realms um, that are in a state 
that we would like to achieve at this planet right now. Like there's still like a lot of distortions and a lot of chaos and a lot of mm, dissonance, I would say. Yeah. So I wanted to tune into realms that are very balanced and very highly spiritual evolved and that have maintained a way of reciprocity and the balance and a connection with nature. So while I was creating those sounds, I was imagining and visualizing and tuning into realms um, known and unknown um, that were, were inspiring me um, to create those sounds. So it started maybe with a nature sound and then the drone came and another and it was like this intuitive channeling process but basically, I always had this vision of those places, physical and non-physical, that are like very highly spiritually evolved, very balanced, very harmonic, um, very wise, and just worlds that inhabit beings that have maintained a harmonious relationship with each other and with their environment. So... Um, this is then how we came up with 16 different realms, and, and it's I decided to call it shamanic portals because I realized, okay, so each realm, which is like each scene in and of itself has um, its own frequency and represents this world. And by actually playing this frequency to people and to ourselves and using it in sound journeys, we're actually bringing those higher frequencies into this realm and therefore raising the vibration and therefore changing our reality in this realm. Basically, leveling it up in a sense right like bringing the qualities of these other worlds into this world yeah. and uplifting the frequency and the consciousness and like magic enchanting the world basically okay. so then i was like wow that's amazing we have this 16 different worlds and i was like thinking hmm it would be super nice because sky made such a beautiful album cover for my album and i felt like wow that would be amazing if he could at least, like for each of the 16 realms, which at this time didn't have any names. They were just like low drone one, mid yeah. drone two, da -da -da. Remember, 16 yeah. different, like just numbers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because I was just concerned with the sounds, frequencies. And I was like, Sky, man, that would be so amazing if you could just listen to the sounds and create like one image for each realm so that people also have like um, some sort of visualization of it and and so this was the idea of co-creating and this is how i invited you and now sky please uh tell us what happened from yeah, that I mean, moment you can see this is so exciting for me because it's just the description of these realms that well first of all they're they're not just idealized but they're these beautiful places um and what, the way that you described them to me was that they're these beautiful places where either the people live in harmony with nature or their wisdom, it, either ancient or futuristic, has has gotten them to live in, in harmony with themselves. And and we could, I could go on, but I remember when we had this meeting, um, the minute you started talking about this, and I, would, I too was looking at the screen, you were showing me the screen, it was just... Atmos 1, Atmos 2, Atmos 3, Atmos 2. And it was all like just a sea of orange at that time. Just all orange tracks. And we'll show you guys. That. I mean, if you haven't seen Serenic Turtles, you'll see it's all rainbow now. Uh, but anyway, but I remember thinking to myself at the time, wow, this would be so fun to make a different portal for each one of these. And you played some of them for me. And the very first thing that I thought was, wow, how did you, how did you come up with themes for each one? Of these tracks i don't even know if i've asked you this before but that's what i was thinking and then as you're playing them for me each track did have its own kind of feeling to it its own sort of um it sounded like very different from the other ones and so it was really easy for me to quickly start to even then start to visualize what these different realms could be right and i love the idea of opening portals and bringing that energy into this world. Uh, and especially for like musicians too, um, for creatives. I personally believe we're all tapped into a creative source of some sort, whether you know, mm -hmm. that is whatever your belief system or that is. I think we're all born innately um, with creativity in us, you know, and as children, we sometimes we lose that as we move out into the regular world and we have to do all of the mundane things. We have to become adults or whatever. 
but um, my inner child was just so excited about this project. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I said, how could I even do 16 images by the time you, because remember at the time you were saying, oh, well, so I want to have this done by this time. And I asked you when the deadline was, and I was like, okay, that would be a push. But I am so grateful and so thankful that you were open to extending it because what ended up happening was we talked about it. And at this time, I was working on a track called Sacred Dream, uh, which is a track about slit that I was trying to make for to help people with sleep. So part of my charter as fluorescent and making ambient and sound healing music is um, to help people who have anxiety or have are suffering from PTSD like I did at one point in time um, or or looking to relax I come from a corporate tech background and you know I've come home and be really stressed out a lot and uh, during my PTSD therapy and I would listen to a lot of ambient music some of it yours and other people's really and then when I got through my therapy I decided what a great gift that was and so helpful to me in my transformation and through um, my healing that I wanted to take all that I'd known about making music before previously, which was more like tech house and, you know, when I was a DJ for many years and, uh, and or making music to go along with motion graphics or things like that and um, really let my inner child come out to play and make beautiful. And so that's why, you know, when we first got involved with the your wonderful course uh, and I met all the other sound healers and then I was like, yeah, this is my charter. And then at that time, my wife had given me something called a plant wave, which I took out hiking with me and I could record plants. And I realized that each plant has its own bioelectric signature and that I could take those bioelectrical signatures and bring them back and put them into Ableton and assign musical instruments to them. And in the process of doing that, I created a band of plants that would play and I would make music with them. And I was just like, this is this whole new world, right? It's almost like mm -hmm. I stepped into a whole new realm in that. My imagination exploded and I, every time I sat down to play, it was with Ableton, it wasn't like, what am I gonna make? It was more like playtime, right? So um, to get back to this, I was thinking at the time when I made Sacred Dreams that I had made as a designer, as a visual person, I'm an audio and visual designer by trade and then you know I also make music now, but um, I make a lot of mood boards. Whenever I start a new project, you make like a mood board and I was thinking, how cool would it be not only just to have an image for the 16 portals, which would be inspiring, um, and to work with you on, on listening to those and coming up with that, but how cool would it be if each sound also had an image to go with it and a description to go with it? And we talked about that and it was like, we both realized, I think at the time, how much work that would be, or maybe yeah, not. Yeah. But um, we were, <laughs> yeah, but, no. but, I, but then the more I, you know, yeah, it's actually, I think, did we, did you say no originally to that idea or did we? No, say, I just, yeah. no, I, I, I like the idea. I was just thinking yeah. like, there's going to be a lot of work and it's going right. to delay the release because That's the right. template, like the sounds were ready, but yeah. then I was like, no, man, it's going to be worth it. <laughs> and then it yeah. ended up to be this whole like channeling journey, right? Yeah. And so... I guess I'll, I'm, I'm, I'm going on and on about it, but basically I was, you're, I was really inspired by the idea that you had. Uh, and, mm -hmm. and then I listened to, you gave me the, the template and I listened to each realm, each portal, and I could really tell that you had channeled or created these individual different realms. They all sounded different from each other. And um, the process in which I ended up making the images for them is that I would let, sit and listen very carefully to the entire realm first, the track, and then I would go through and listen to each individual sound in it. And a lot of that was done in like meditation time. So I would combine mm -hmm. them with meditation time. And then I had my iPad handy uh, and a piece of paper uh, to write on like a sketchbook. And then right as soon as I get done meditating, I would just free draw and free write whatever came to me during that time from um, the individual realm I was trying to create images for. And sometimes um, they would come to me in meditation. Some some were a little bit more, I think we talked about this, were a little bit more elusive um, where I wasn't getting a clear, and I had to listen to them multiple times or I had to sleep on it. Sometimes like the, I, 
the visions or the ideas would come when I was out in nature. Um, like Teolia was like that uh, during a stormy day and stuff like that. So it's whether it's channeling or it's just a creative source coming through us or whatever it is, what I found was that I would get these messages and not only would I get the, the, the visions for it, but I'd get this like innate thematic kind of wisdom that kind of came through it with it in the writing. And then we would share like on a very weekly basis. And it was funny how many, I don't know, coincidences or how many overlapping, because you gave me really just a track with individual names and you were so great about not giving me creative direction. That was the other thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You allowed me to take your baby and basically start to generate worlds without a lot of, you know, you just said, no, I want you to see how you feel about that, which at the time I thought was incredibly brave. Uh, and, and, and now I think it's, was the key to the success, at least for me and the beauty of what came out of it. Would you agree? Yeah. I can just share that. I felt you were super tapped in, you know, like the, the, mm -hmm. the moment you shared your first, like, first of all, I thought it's amazing that you actually take the time to go so deep with it, like mm -hmm. sit and meditate and listen and receive. I thought that was amazing on its own and I wanted to honor that. But then when you shared what came through, I'm like, yeah, man, he's spot on. Like, he is onto something. And I, from this moment on, just let have him open his channel and receive and share what's coming through because it was so resonant. Yeah, so, I mean, that, it's one of the, the most amazing projects I've ever worked on. I mean, just hands down because it was such a beautiful co-creative process with you. But also, I, I felt like, the foundation of this, the sounds that you made were so interesting to listen to and so inspiring to listen to. And I had so much fun working with them, even the challenging ones. Um, and so, yeah, and it was just, it just came really easy and flowed. And that that's not a lot of projects you get to work on are like that, you know, mm -hmm. especially coming from the Google corporate world that I spent, you know, 20 years in <laughs> um, and all that. Usually you're working for a brand or working for some sort of preconceived. And this was such a a beautiful gift to me as an artist and as a producer too, just listening to that, all that was really inspiring. So um, maybe I could show some of the, yes, please. Yeah, some of the stuff, because we've been talking a lot about, so if you, if you had bought the, the Shamanic Portals template, you might have just opened up the, the template itself. Uh, so if you just bought the Shamanic Portals template, you might've just opened up the template itself and, you know, in the side, here on the template as well there you might have seen this which is what i created is it showing uh up? i don't know if you already switched the screen there's a little delay i'm checking on youtube now i'm sure it's showing up because i should switch over we're to the template still, so. mm -hmm. yeah we're still sharing the zoom okay but... let's see if it does is it not Again, this is my first time doing this. Oh, wow. Well, there's there's a long, maybe I just need to restart. Um, here. Oh, yeah, I was not. I just okay. needed to restart. Okay. It's there. <laughs> okay. Forgive us. Oh, this is like our first time doing this together. So uh, we tried to. Yeah. So. Okay. No, it's, it's all there. Okay, good. Uh, so so if, you, if you just, if you're like me or like most, you know, if you open up a template package with like uh, a download, you might just get to the project and open it up and you open up this and then on the side panel here, we thought it would be, and this is actually was an idea from our friend Will, by the way, I wanted to, to include a, what we were generating in the PDF, which I'm about to show you in a minute, um, as a, as an Ableton lesson as well that we can tie in so that you could actually look at the images and read some descriptions about what we came up with for this, what was, what was given to us, what we, what came through with each one of these um, without having to leave your session, which was a huge gift to the project, I think, as well. But you might just have seen this as well. What you might not have, what you might not have seen is I actually created a full color PDF that also is um, complementary to the um, template that you can take a look at. You can. It, it's, it has a much bigger images and uh, has a much bigger writing. <laughs> so it's easier to consume as well uh, and has its own unique um, 
well, it's a better, it's, it's, it's a more immersive experience than doing it in the little side panel, I'd say, if you want to like learn more about that. Um, so I created the PDF, uh, created all of the, the writing for each one of the portals. Um, and in the PDF itself, we have an intro where Stefan, you do a great introduction, um, to uh, talk about how we started the project. And I also talk about how I created the art and musical mood boarding, which I'm about to get into in a second. And then we go into how to use the guide. You can watch a video tutorial, et cetera. Uh, and then we get into the portals from there. Uh, so all the artwork for each one of these portals, along with the individual sounds, was done, created through that meditative process and through, uh, or sometimes walking in nature, et cetera. And how I started each one of them was I would always start off with a sketch. Um, so let me actually switch back and I'll show you before I go into the sketch. Let me show you. So this sketch I'm about to show you is for uh, one of the realms that we call the Ember. Uh, let me see this. I should have just done the, there it is. So the Ember is an ethereal realm uh, that basically the way that what came through for me is it's a place of the beginning of the cosmic spark where your soul starts. And it's also a place that's often visited where before you move on from this realm into other, the multiverse. Um, and it's a place of pure acceptance and pure love. Um, and so one of the sounds in it is prismatic love, which is one of my favorite ones that I did. So I'm going to show that off here, but also it's, it's a very beautiful, very warm and, and light artwork. Oh yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. So let me actually do that. Let's see. Can you hear, oh, let's put the clip here. I don't know if you can hear it. Can you hear it? Okay. Yeah. So prismatic love, um, enlightened love. This is a very warm sound. And it felt like um, a coming back, like of two souls reunited after a long time. That is the, the, the short end of the download that I got for, for this image. So I started off by just doing some sketches. Um, and I, this is how I always start very loose sketches and some like light color in between. Um, originally, I kind of had these as elves, as you can see with some of the ears and stuff. And then I eventually pulled that back a bit so that it wasn't so fantasy-like. But you can see some of the different sketches that I did here, just like light pencil, light color. Um, and from there, what I would do is I would take these in and I would ink them and add base colors to like the clothing, the face, et cetera, just to get to give me an, an idea of where the colors might go and a foundation to play with, base shading, et cetera. Um, from that, I would take some of these, I would use Mid Journey and I would create some of the concepts with them. And then I would paint back over them again to create the final concepts that I presented to you. So, it was kind of a back and forth. And some of the images I just did straight out painting. Sometimes I would, when I wanted to have more concepts, because we're doing this pretty fast, I would put a lot of the sketches or a lot of the base paintings in the mid journey and have it spit out different ideas for me. And then I would take those and I would refine them. And then I'd present some of those to you that way. And I think that you can, I think that in this one, yeah, the final one is in these, these final concepts here, which the one that had the most radiance is the one that you're seeing where um, there's more of the, the sun is at the back of them and that you can really focus on the reunification of the two souls. Um, yeah, yeah. So another, here's another example of Luminostra, which is a realm of pure starlight. And this is actually, let me, yeah, I'm gonna switch it. Yeah, so this would be for the not sure. Let me play that instead. So I'll stop this. So this, I might turn it up a little. 
So for this one, what came to me is a realm of pure starlight. And in this painting process here, uh, I did not do as many sketches and as many concepts because, oh, I think I might need to replay this. I'm gonna switch to this. I didn't do as many concepts because I just had an idea and I just went with it right away. And I knew that's what I wanted it to be. As a matter of fact, I think I only presented one. I said, this is the thing for Luminostra. And I, you, I remember I sent it to you really late and you were like, I love it, <laughs> which is good because I was like, I, I was thinking that's good because I don't really have any other concepts for this, right? Um, and this is, I think this is the final one that ended up in our promo as well. So you can see where it went from there. Yeah, so that's an idea of the, the artistic process. And then if we go back really quickly and just look at the PDF, you can see that there is also a lot of writing that happened in here for each one of these places. And, and again, this is what was interesting about this is that I would review the writing with you and I'd send it to you. And um, a lot of times, like, you know, we didn't talk about what the writing was going to be. Um, and there's multiple of these that some I think that you were like, oh, I didn't think about that. And then it made sense to you. And then there are other ones where I think you said to me that like, wow, that's so crazy because that's exactly how, what I was thinking of when I created the music for it. And I, I want to say that a lot of this art that came through, I feel like it is a co-creation with you because like your music really inspired it. So that channeling of whatever came through, that creative source of whatever came through, came through your music and then I picked up on it from there. And I think that's the power of music, right? Because the music can really not only just transfer emotion to us, but at least for me, I've always been able to look, to hear music and, and images come, right? It's like one of, it's, it's imagination is one of my superpowers, but like I, every one of us has it. So for me, I've always been, that's, I've been visuals have always gone with music, but a lot of what I got was super inspired. I, like I wouldn't have just come up with this on my own, just for my own music. So, so there's that. Uh, so let's see what's next. Maybe we should talk about next, uh, musical mood boarding. Does that sound good? Okay. Yeah. So, this is Milanote, which is just a note-taking app, right? So uh, it's what I use to make mood boards with. It's kind of set up for creatives. Uh, it's great. I don't, I'm not, not sponsored by them. No one's paying us for this. <laughs> this is what I use. If you wanted to create your own mood boards, you could just search for free mood boards online. You could also use something like Google Docs, although that's kind of hard to use with. But basically what you want is to create a mood board. A mood board essentially is just a collection of images or music or things that you want to inspire you in your creative process, right? So a lot of times when we start a project, what we'll do is we'll create a mood board around the concepts and then we can show that to like a client or something and they can get an idea of where we're headed. How does that relate to music? Well, I think sometimes as artists, we can sit down in our sessions and want to create something and be staring at a blank screen even though we have 17 different sample libraries and a bunch of music sounds we made right but like okay great well how do i refine that how do i how do i tell a story with that how do i create my track um from scratch right <laughs> right like uh, some days we're more inspired some days we're maybe we're just sit down and we're like i don't know where to go with this um so for me, like mood boarding, I think can also be translated over to musicians just the same way. And um, what, I, what I'm going to try to show you here is that the idea behind the mood boarding that came to me when you were talking about making schematic portals, and especially for beginners, it says beginners, it might be, we might watch like a YouTube tutorial and we follow it and then we end up with a track that maybe we change a little bit, but it's kind of like the track we follow in the tutorial a little bit. And then when we go to make like our new track, this happened to me, like, you know, when I first started, I might make a track with somebody else or I would follow a tutorial, would try to learn something technique or to do something. But then I'd sit down to do my own track and I'd be like, what do I make? So like 
creatives get their inspiration, musicians get their inspirations from all over nature or movies or, you know, maybe something you love or something that happened to you. But how do we refine the sounds we want to use into a story? And I think innately we're all storytellers. I come from a Native American background. So my dad is uh, Apache and uh, grew up with Lakota. So there's a, there's a tradition of telling stories that's innately in me. My mother was, uh, my, my grandmother was also a fiction, like a science fiction writer. So I grew up reading a lot of books and, and things. Um, so for example, for Sacred Dream, I knew I wanted to make a sleeping track that could help people who have trouble sleeping or maybe have nightmares or kids who have nightmares. Um, that at the time when we were making this, I think there was like a little competition to do, to create, not a competition, but there was a call out to, for people to make sleep healing music. And at the time, I didn't know if I was gonna enter that or not, but I also just really wanted to make a track that I could sleep to at night. And when I was going through my PTSD and my therapy and stuff, sometimes I'd have these really terrible nightmares and uh, I would turn to like YouTube and watch, put on like ambient music that had some sort of graphic on it and it would help me sleep. So I wanted to do that, something similar to that. And this idea came to me for a white deer in the woods um, and it finds a place in the dark woods to sleep. And so I went out and found a bunch of different inspirational art um, that I was going to, that would inspire the track itself. And then I also used that to kind of go in and create my own, all these deers over here are my explorations. And I found some other, you know, references and stuff. So this is an idea, again, this is like visual designers and artists might do this, but I think as musicians, we could do the same. For example, from this, uh, I decided, okay, well, I want some owls in the song because we need some forest sounds. I want some, maybe some wind, um, some night ambience, some crickets, um, a loon kind of in the background. And then I actually got my dad, uh, who's a beautiful, his name's Sky Red Hawk. He's a beautiful Native American uh, or tribal indigenous flute player. And um, he came in and played flute over the top of this. And it just really brought everything together. So that's an example of what I was doing at the time and why when you came to me about the portals work, I was like, wouldn't it be cool for beginners if we could create mood boarding as another option to get them started? You know, uh, and I think I love about portals is that you can create like a soundscape as a starting song really easily. And then you can either double up in the tracks and start to make more with that, or you could even bring in your other things into that on top of it, right? And that's what we're gonna do in a second here. So that's the idea behind musical mood boards. Um, and Milo Note's great because like you could, they give you like a setup that's just like this and then you can just double click something and you can go in and you can add, uh, like, let me just go here and get something here. So let's go to the mood board images. Okay, here we go. So. We actually, I actually created a bunch of smaller mood board images that we can use. I think we put a link to it in the description, right? Yeah, so, so for example, I made a bunch of the images that are in the PDF and I made them smaller so we could do mood boarding with them. But like you could go in and just open this up and then you get like, it just opens up in this nice layout. Now, we're gonna do it slightly different want to show you how to do this, but that's what I like about Milano. And I think that Canva and the other, and other things like that, you can do something similar. But the idea is that you want something you can come in and you can drag images into really, really easily um, to do it visually. Okay. And they can just have it in the description. Right. So if you just look at the Ableton template itself, the session view is kind of like a mood board in a sense, mm -hmm. if you look at it. Mm -hmm. That's what it was reminding me of because you have all of these different portals that you can choose from, right? And you can mix and match them together. And then you've also got the side panel over here, all access to all this inspiration from all these different portals, right? And I can go and take a look yeah. 
and I can look at the images in here, and then I can go and select them and listen to the sounds. So in a way, it's it's almost like a built-in musical mood board. But for the sake of this, just to, to I want to show, let's actually create a soundscape right now where yeah. we take a where we take a a story and we'll just take some of the images from portals and we'll try to put them make a story put them in add them to this mood board and create a little story with them and then we'll see how it works with the shredded portal so this i think i was talking to you last yesterday stefan about i've been losing a lot of sleep lately just because i've been up creative and uh how sometimes as a creative I think that I'm immune to sleep like I could I could just sleep later or whatever I guess like I we stay up later thinking that if we're creatives wait we got to finish we got to finish this this track or I want to finish this animation or whatever and then before I know it so I was trying to think about what kind of story we might want to tell just off the cuff and this journey of the adept came to me um and I, I just want to share the story with you guys. It's really quick, but just hang with me and then we'll start adding. We, you and I can just try to see if we can add some things to this from those traumatic portals. So Journey of the Adept, I'm going to tell the story really quickly. An adept of light seeks to unravel the mysteries of their cosmic origin in order to transcend to mastery. That's the start of the story. And in seeking guidance from an elder, the adept is told secrets such as this reside in the deepest realms of our subconscious or their subconscious. So the adept uh, focuses and meditates without distraction for days and days, but nothing comes to them. Frustrated and tired, the adept's will eventually wanes and they fall into dream. And in their dreams, the adept finds themselves wandering and lost in the fog of their own mind. This is like how I was feeling the last couple of days. It was a very foggy mind. Um, but in that fog, many sounds echo from the ether in all directions randomly, though they have no idea which to follow. Um, so calming their mind, they sit quietly breathing. Soon after something calls to them, following the call, they find a portal and they step through it. The portal leads them to a strange new world, which will figure out what that's going to be together uh, today. Uh, where they find wisdom, not in cosmic origin, not in the cosmic origin that they seek, but instead profound beauty revealed by a guardian. Um, and then the adept returns to the realm forever changed, transcending to mastery, not by discovering the cosmic origin, but instead in the gratitude of the journey for who they have become. Okay, so lots of times I get an idea for a story like this. And this story is pretty loosely based on the hero's journey. If, uh, if, if uh, you don't know what that is, just go look it up. Um, but the hero's journey is usually there's a hero who has a call to action, um, usually by a mentor or somebody who is an or an elder. Um, and at first they're reluctant to, to move forward, but then they move forward and they face some sort of struggles and in the struggles they change and that they overcome the hero struggle gets through those and they change and they forever changed after that the world is different and how they've had an effect on the world just like us as creatives in a way right so when we start so i thought it was yeah <laughs> yeah i think many of us can so i thought even though it's a little bit literal to that kind of formula of most of our stories that we, movies and things are written in this. So I thought it would be easy for us to, to for everyone to adapt to, not too complex. So with that, now we're going to, what we're going to do is we're going to actually, I'm going to switch over so we can see everything. If you see my screen with everything here. So we're going to start with an, yeah. with an adept of light seeks to unravel the mysteries of their cosmic origin in order to transcend to mastery. So what I might do here is I might do one of two things. I might just start looking through the images. And again, this is my process. It might be slightly different for you. You might start just listening to sounds. And I think many people would do that too. And we're gonna to do some of that as well. But for me, I'm a visual person. So 
one of the things actually that's coming to me right now would be there is the master and the student, right? So if we go to table of contents, I think in Luminostra, there is the etheric gardens. Yeah. So the etheric gardens, etheric gardens flourish in Luminostra, embodying the vibrant energies of different star civilizations. Each garden radiates unique qualities and insights. In this picture, you can see there is a, there are two people. And maybe I can't blow this up, but there are two people. Uh, actually, let me just get it here. So here's the musical mood board images you can download from the link here. Let's just go find Etheric Gardens. I'm going to drag this in here. Let me see if I can make it bigger. So you can see there is a master and there's a little student here. So that would probably work, right? So let's, mm -hmm. let's yeah. do that. And I like that as a starting point, right? So let's actually now take that Etheric Gardens and let's play that. Let's see what it sounds like. Let me stop this. Luminostra is one of my favorite. So maybe it's natural that I get there, but let's just play with this and see if this sounds good. Now, if you're looking at my template, and you might have noticed that the flora and fauna, it's way over here. Instead, normally it would be on this side, but I move it to the front because Stefan, I think you do this too. A lot of times I start with flora and fauna. Yeah. I always start with the nature sounds. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of, I'm a linear thinker, so I try to kind of oftentimes the beginning, you know, like a story. So I just put this over here. So I love this. So now we're starting with the, the master and the student, right? The adept. Um, and I actually think seeking guidance from the elder, the app just told secrets. So like, let's go ahead and just make, that's going to cover this one too. And then the adept focuses and meditates. For distraction about days i think that actually is covered here too so in the gardens he focuses and meditates or they uh, focus and meditate we don't have to be gender specific here so the adept so now for days and days but nothing comes to them so frustrated and tired they fall into dream in their dreams the adept finds themselves wandering and lost in the fog of their own minds so for dreams just one question. Can you turn down the etheric gardens like a little bit? Yeah. Just like a notch. How about like, how about right here? Yeah, perfect. Is that good? Okay. Mm -hmm. So for dreams, I immediately think of the astral plane. Yeah. The astral plane is, is, a, is a mystical realm of endless possibility where visions, creativity, and intuition hold dominion. It's a place of shifting fractals and ever-changing landscapes where reality is malleable and anything is possible. And the dream weavers are there. You can read more about this, of course. So maybe we go straight from here to the astral plane. Mm -hmm. So our adepts is going to the dream. Let's see how that sounds. Ooh, I like it. What do you think? Does that sound good? I think it's great, man. I resonate. Okay, I, cool. I, and then I love how those two sounds with this context just like boom instantly create this experience right like you're yeah, in it i love it that sounds really good together yeah okay so yeah, super good. so he falls they, they fall in the dreams this is the dream state the, the dream realm right which would make sense too because you know the, in the dream realm you could get lost in the fog mm -hmm. of your own mind in the fog of distraction in the fog of all that or just in your dreams forever so what do we say here yeah. um so let me go get that. So we're gonna to go to the back here. We'll go to the astral plane and get the astral plane in here. Put this together. There it is. So there's the astral plane. Okay. Yeah. So many sounds echo from the ether in all directions randomly. They have no idea which to follow. So maybe we can do that with um, some of the sound effects and stuff in a minute, but I wanna get so the soundscape together. Yeah. So maybe we can come back For to that sure. part. So mm -hmm. then calming their mind, they sit quietly breathing. Soon after, something calls to them. Following the call, they find a portal to step through. So something calls to them and a portal to step through. Yeah. So I think when I think of something calling to them, so the Atlanteans have this um, planar beacon, right? Yeah. Can go back to that. So we could try that. Atlantis. The planar beacons. 
Legend holds that the melodies of the whales possess an extraordinary, extraordinary ability to stabilize the very fabric of the multiverse. Their harmonious frequencies resonate in the water confines of Atlantis, echoing through both the ocean steps and the myriad dimensions in the multiverse, complementing these mystical songs. Atlantis employs planar beacons strategically placed throughout the depths. These beacons serve as transmitters, broadcasters, broadcasting the whale songs and other wisdom-laden transmissions back in the cosmos. Together with the whale songs and the planar beacons form a symphony of stability, reverberating mm. through space and time, maintaining the delicate balance of the multiverse. So Beautiful. perhaps it's a planar beacon. So if we go and we'll turn that on. Let me know if that gets too loud. For now, it sounds good. What do you think of that? With it? I think it works super well together. Okay. The other thing we could do is there is the portal, right? So maybe they go through the dream portal. They're getting called the uh -huh. dream portal, so let's put that in there. Ooh. That sounds nice. Good. Yeah. So let's, wow. so let's go back to the dream portal and put that over here. Ooh, that sounded good. And mm. then let's just go ahead and go to Atlantis and we'll take the, uh, or the planar beacon. So we'll put this in here too. And it doesn't have to be perfect, guys. Like we can, we can just kind of stack them on top of each other too and figure out what we like. Um, the portal leads them to a strange new world. So maybe that's where the planar beacon goes, right? Because that's yeah. they go to the portal, and then they've at the planar beacon that's called them. Okay. Where they find wisdom not in the cosmic origin they seek, but instead profound beauty revealed by a guardian. So the guardians, there's two guardians in Atlantis where this portal's from, where this planar beacon's from. So let's just go look at those. So there's the whales, right? And then there's also the coral guardians, the coral spirits, which I'm not gonna read all of this uh, if you guys are interested, but I'll just, I'll give you a little taste of each one, but I don't wanna have to it take a long time to read through all this, but. So with the whale song sanctuary within the resplendent realm of Atlantis, hidden in the embrace of gentle sea currents and nestled among the, court, the radiant coral gardens lies the sanctum of song sanctuary for the most majestic creatures of the deep, the whales. The sanctum is not just a refuge for, but a safe, sacred place deeply woven into the fabric of Atlantean society and lore. Mm -hmm. And then the, the coral spirits, beyond the shimmering crystal temples and the scholarly halls lies a secret of unfathomable significance. The mystery known only to the Atlanteans is cornerstone. Okay, so I'm not going to read out, but they guard this mystery. The coral spirits guard that mystery. I think let's try the whales first. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, let's try. Mm -hmm. So then that would be the whale song sanctuary. So let's try that. What do you think? It works well. I would just turn it down a little bit. Okay. Like. I think minus six is fine. Minus six, okay. Yeah. Okay, so let's... Takes a while until it's coming back, right? So that's good. Yeah. Like it leaves some space. We could also try the... Um, let's see, where are the coral guardians at? The, the coral, coral spirits? Coral spirits yeah. are over here. They are like... That's the thing. Yeah, you can duplicate the channel now. Yeah, so... So duplicate that. Right? Can be able to yeah. that. It might take a second to do it. Hopefully there's a crash. <laughs> there it goes. Okay, so then we'll just play this and see if that sounds better. So I stopped. Oh, I just turned that down. Let's see. Crawl spirit. Yeah. This can also go down quite significantly. Yeah. Yeah, nice. It's more like in the back, right? Yeah. I kind of feel like I like the whale. Let's... Me personally, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop that for I'm gonna put the whales back for now, because I feel like it. At least for me. Yeah, it instead of the chorus, but it's also yeah. frequency-wise, like, yeah, because we have the crickets already. 
and then with the waves it's kind of clashing a bit that's why i would have put it in the background like super subtle but it's even nicer like this yeah so i mean that's part of it right like you can you're going to make decisions like this as you come along and the story can guide them but like the nice thing about this is that you have all these options and so i like the whales exactly. let's, let's let's go with the whales for now like you can choose whatever you want for yourself like So we'll put the whales in here. And then, so the whales show the adept a profound beauty. So being with the whales and in the whale song sanctuary, they are transformed somehow. And the adept now returns to their realm forever changed. So they learn something, they grow, they overcome what they were originally seek. The whales help show them that, or maybe it's just being in the sanctuary, or maybe it's the spirit gardens, we, like the coral gardens, we can go back to that. But then the yeah. adept returns to their realm forever changed, transcending, not master, transcending to mastery, not by discovering their cosmic origin, but instead in gratitude for the journey of who they have become. So if they're going to go back to the realm of Luminastra, where the etheric realms are, perhaps we could look, let's go back to Luminastra really fast. Maybe they go back to the Akashic Nexus, right? So mm -hmm. within Luminastra lies the Akashic ne Nexus, a repository of universal knowledge, and of the collective memories of star civilizations, secrets can access the Akashic ne Records to gain insights into the cosmic origins right so there there's the cosmic origins i knew i got it from somewhere that's what he was looking for yeah exactly right, right. and then I, f I forgot about that and that, that's what it is so like the monastery resonates with the harmonious frequencies that enhance meditation introspection and higher states of consciousness visitors can attune themselves to these frequencies to expand their awareness so there we go and i didn't even plan so, that i mean subconsciously probably because i i wrote this but like I didn't yeah. think about that when I went in, so let's let's do that. Well, let's see. Let's what what if it doesn't sound good? I hope it does. After all that, so let's go, and we'll put in a cosmic nexus and see. Oh, oh nice! Oh, I like it. Yeah, fits super well. Yeah. So. Mm. So there. Now it's complete. Funny, it feels complete now. Yeah, it does. So let me let, let me just go back over here. Let's get the moon Astra, let's get the Astrophysics. Put that in there. So now you have a little story to start with, right? And you can take it and add to this from here. This is like the beginning part. And it's super simple, right? Like it's an easy story to follow. You can fill it in with your own story, with whatever means something to you, but it's a starting point. It's a, a starting point. You can change these, you can move them around, you can do whatever you want. And the nice thing is, it's very lightweight to do this. It's visual. It's also pretty, like, if you can get an idea of what maybe you want the album art to be like, or what you want if you were to hire somebody like me, or like, or make your own animation, or maybe you make a, a slideshow, you know, out of the art itself that you play in the background. So, like, if you buy this template and you have, you get the art. You could play that the art behind you when you're playing your music out. Uh, that's totally fine, you know. So like, yeah, that's another good thing about it. So like, essentially, that's music and mood boarding. And like, how long did it take us to do that? That was like twenty minutes. Amazing, this guy. Right. So let's real quick. I just want to before we move on, it's like maybe we do. I think we mentioned earlier that many sounds echo from the ether in all directions. I just want to show off how like, we could use the sound healing rack or the shamanic frequencies rack to add a couple sound effects into this. Totally. Um, like one thing that comes to mind would be in the sound healing rack, I really love these tuning forks. I really like the 432 one, so let's just play that. Mm. So that could be during the transition or during um, the, the move, maybe maybe when they move from the portal into the new realm or maybe when they go back to the cosmic nexus, that could be a nice chime in or I really like this low one too because it adds this resonance. Yeah. 
Are you feeling either of those? For sure. Yeah, totally. I feel both, man. Okay. They fit perfectly. Yeah. And then, um, so those are good there. And I, I love some of these sustained ones too, but they do kind of take over. But like this one, I think that would be good. The mm -hmm. soft sustain. Mm -hmm. So, if we were going to be more chaotic during that time, maybe we could do something if we wanted to introduce that chaos during the, the lost part. But I'm not going to do that for now. Let's move on to the frequencies rack, right? So in here, I really like um, that eventually will we'll stop. <laughs> I really like the magic shaker. That could be a fun... Like maybe even in the gardens. Like when they're meditating. This could be part yeah. of the abstraction, right? Or the frog perks. I think that's actually, I probably wouldn't include that in this one, but I really do like that one. Or these, these layered atmospheres. Here. Would be really good when they're lost, because if you if you echo these together, it could yeah. be like they're lost during that time, right? So then you can yeah. introduce those in the arrangement view, obviously, and add them in when you're recording. So it, there you go. We're mood boarding, right? We're just mood boards. That's the idea behind it. Um, Epic, man. It's such a beautiful approach. Yeah. Um, and now we have a starting song. Actually, I kind of want to make something. I kind of want to make Just something. to want to let you know, someone in the chat was writing, this is making me levitate. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Amazing. I'm so glad to hear mm. that. Yeah. I mean, it does have the... It, it's, I mean, Luminastra, that's the star room, you know, so yeah, I could see that. And the yeah. astral plane, too. Yeah, but I mean, this is just the beginning, like, right? You could double up things, like, you did a really good job in that last um, tutorial showing how you can double up the different, uh, duplicate these different channels and then use them to move, uh, to move forward. I keep thinking move forward, create your track and session view and then go back in and then lay it all out from there. Um, yeah. But yeah, we just created a soundscape from a story and i hope that was mm -hmm. i actually want i think i'm gonna make a track of this if that's okay. yeah i was saying like man yeah. you should like finish yeah. it it's beautiful yeah yeah and then you can add effects and all that but i'll let stefan explain all that later on because that's his role. Yeah, you can do a lot with the a lot of these sounds can really be really changed when you add like the portals element to it or echoes and things too so play with those yeah. if you have it so that's the idea. Um, and then, where would I take this from here? I think I would probably either, I'd probably either take the story and fill it out a bit more. Like, mm -hmm. what is the, why, what is it, maybe something with the Guardian, right? That part could be filled out more. How did they meet the Guardian? Mm -hmm. Could be filled out. Mm -hmm. Um, what are the what are, what are the distractions, or, or maybe how do they find their way to that sound? But the planar beacon could be filled out more, or their journey yeah. back to the Acosta Nexus. I'm not going to do that now, but you could you could add more if you wanted a longer track. And yeah. it's, and the idea is like you're going to have the story that you make this with, which you're going to hopefully when you sit down in your sessions, you're going to feel like it's coming to play time, and not <laughs> what am I going to do time. Right? What am I? I'm stuck on this part time, and it can really help you. And it, like I, again, it can help you select the sounds that you want, so that as you're moving through the story and adding new parts to you, you can curate the sounds to fit better. Instead of being like, okay, I know I need an intro, and I know I need a build up, and I know I need a, you can approach. It's just a different way of approaching it. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. Super fascinating, man. It's the first time that I see something like this. But I'm really blown away how well it works, like with this concept for the portals and in general as an idea. Yeah. And yeah, how we can come up with something like super unique in that sense. Yeah, I, I think that was really fun. Like I said, I think I want to take this and make my own with it. Which, when you when you were creating these sounds and putting them together, 
were you just like listening mainly? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think we talked about this. Man, yeah. like the whole thing is a completely intuitive process. Like, as I said, like I started maybe with the drones or maybe with the nature sounds. Most of the time, the nature sounds. And then I find a drone. And then from there, I try different things. But it's, yeah, it's listening, feeling. And also, I'm guided. Like, mm -hmm. the, the choices that I make, they are not like arbitrary or something. Like, I have a feeling I should do this or that somehow. And then I listen and then. And it builds, right? It builds. So then you have the nature sound, the low drone, then the mid drone, then the high drone. And then you have all the drones. And then, okay, the atmospheric sounds are coming. So it's it's a process that is like building on top of each other. But it's also very intuitive and very guided. And it's a lot of listening and feeling and tuning in. Yeah. I mean, we are so influenced by so many things in our general day to day. And I think like when we make music, it's kind of a, oftentimes it's a snapshot of where we are, both in our personal growth and our transformative growth of where we come from. Mm -hmm. um, and even like we made this over the, the course of like a, a year, right? So like, yeah, I was a little bit worried when you when you take that long to do a project, you know, like if you're in one space and then when you finish it, you're in another. Luckily for me, you had already finished all the music primarily yeah. by the time we started that. So it, it was more exactly. like that place. Like, yeah, so that's that was that's it's been one of my favorite projects because of this, and um, I really, I really, I was really inspired by the idea of um, for beginners especially, mm. this being an inspiration to them. Um, these 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 portals that we channeled or we we, we came from the creative source for us or whatever, all of these different portals, um, they really are one interpretation, but I think there's a lot that every individual person could interpret on their own beyond that. And we actually call that out in the introduction um, that you're absolutely welcome to take these and not be prescriptive with them, right? By any means. Your personal in, in, in interpretation, you're, what you're gonna get out of this and what you're gonna hear out of the sounds, you could hear something completely different in these portals and you, and you don't have to be tied to the giving waters being from Wakinya, you might hear something else, of course. It's just a, re a beautiful place to start and a beautiful creative source that we hope that will inspire you in your own journeys. And the idea of jumping through these different portals to go to these different places, um, I thought would be really fun for beginners, a really great inspiration. And they can take that and where will their journeys take them is going to be really interesting to see. And I encourage uh, anyone out there who, who makes this stuff to Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say, I just want to say, is that better? I just want to say before I forget, uh, I encourage anyone who makes stuff with this to please share it with us because I will post it all over my socials and I want to see what you guys come up with. I'm really curious. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, the, this has been a, a project of love from, I think, for both of us. But for me, I could say a project of love. Like, I really want, I believe everyone has an inner child and, and, and everyone has imagination in them. And, and we can bring more magic into this world and that no one has the magic or the light that you have. And it, it's without you creating something that's less magic that wouldn't have been there in the first place. So I really hope. Uh, not only that you make something and if you feel comfortable sharing with us, of course, if you don't, that's fine too. But whatever you make with it, um, if you do feel comfortable with sharing us, that, that would bring me great joy just to see what you guys create. And I'm sure it would for you too, Stefan. Are there any questions that came up? That, 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 oh yeah. Okay, Travis. He was also part of the academy. He's just writing in the chat. Like, um, I just bought a new native flute. Can't wait to make some backing tracks with the templates. That's super cool, Travis. Oh, man. Uh, Travis also has a beautiful meditation music um, channel. Travis, if you want to put it in the chat, feel free. Please type your YouTube channel in also, Sky. Yeah. Uh, I, can, I can link your channel or if you want to put it in. I can 
I can put it in. You can probably put so it in because I've got so many windows open. That'd be cool. Yeah, it's just, exactly. It's just, uh, my YouTube is just at Florist, uh, Florist. Yeah. So like, I was just gonna, gonna. Yeah, Florist, Florist is because I work with plants and it's, it's a combo of the word flora and synth obviously because i make a lot of uh, art and stuff on computers and work with computers and and since hence the name yeah uh if you are interested in uh how i work with plants i'm actually going to be doing some some either live streams or i'll probably do a few just tutorial videos of actually hooking up the plants and showing how i hook up the plants to ableton live and how i record them um, and I even want to do some field trips where I go out into, I live in the Pacific Northwest and there's, which is like a candy store for people who want to work with plants. It's just, there's so much beautiful, uh, it's like a temperate rainforest up here. So I want to go take you to some of my perfect spots and record some plants outside too when spring and spring comes and it's not going to rain all over my equipment. <laughs> Yeah, oh, wait. So, Somebody is saying he cannot see us? Or... Oh. Oh, okay. Is Steve, it... is it going now? Um, yeah, on the oh, end, it's, it's still working. Uh oh. I'm just. Maybe I need to in. recapture it. Let's see. So I can hear it. Okay. Can you see, can you see us? Can somebody else? Please share, like Travis or Eternal Zoe. Um, can you hear us? Can you see us? Oh, ah, yeah, Travis is saying he can see us. Okay, okay, great. Yeah, it's my first time using OBS, guys. So I'm sorry. I apologize if it's if there's any lag. I, I'm not a professional. A live okay, no, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. Steve is also up again. All right, guys. Do you have any other questions? Anything you would like to share? Maybe Stefan, like when you first start a track, um, how do you start a track? Like, what's your, what's your process typically from scratch? Um, oh, like Travis is asking you, what software do you use to work with plants, this guy? Oh, what software? Yeah. So there yeah. is there. So it's actually uh, there's a device called a plant wave. Uh, let me see if I can go to Chrome here and I can. Let me know if you plant wave. Yeah, it's plant wave. It's a device called a plant wave. And this device right here, turn this off, close the window. This this is the device. Oh, get out, go away. <laughs> All right. This is the device right here. Um, and it's like that's how big it is. You can take it, and basically what it has is it has um, these two little electrodes. You can see them here, right? And they, you take those, and they're it's sticky. It, you can put them on plants without hurting them, and it attaches like to a leaf. Or they also have these little clips if you want to put it on something that's more of like a succulent or something that might break normally from like a leaf that's sort of or like a stem. And what it does is it reads the bioelectric signature of the plant. And each plant, depending upon the time of day, how much water it has, how it's doing, if it's healthy or not, um, how, if it's there's sun on it, will its bioelectric, bioelectric signature will change slightly. And it will record that and into your phone. And you can set up in the, there's an app that comes with it. You can set up like instruments. Um, they have a bunch of built-in things, like basically it, it, each, but depending upon the signature, different keys will play, right? And so it'll make this beautiful, like ambient music on its own. And you can just, if you just want to get it and listen to the music, you can do that. If you want to actually make music with it, there is, a, you have to pay a yearly subscription for it, of course. But when you do that, um, it allows you to get into the MIDI aspect of it. And you can get in there and you can take, get all the MIDI notes and you download the MIDI notes and then you can play whatever you want with them, right? So I use it, I go out, either I go out and I'll find a spot and I'll just record for an hour or so and sit by a river. Um, or I actually have a, a group of plants 
that are here in my house that I or like my little band and so I found some of my plants when I water them are better at playing bass or better at playing like uh, synths yeah 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 like more melodic I have one named Melody who's actually and I can show this in a later a later a later stream sometime but um but essentially this this is where you go get it um it's a bit of a pain to set up at first to get it into Ableton what you need is you need a MIDI in from the plant wave itself there's a, it has like a little connector that goes out and then you plug that into a midi in so i have a keyboard that i use um and then i just plug it in the midi in and then that midi in gets routed into ableton and then you can assign whatever sounds you want to it and what's great about that is that when i'm just here during the day doing maybe design i'll have my plants playing and then i can record them whenever they start to play something that's interesting and the most cool thing about this is I was recording a bush that was out in front of my house. And this was actually pretty soon after I got this. And I just had it plugged in. And the sun was coming over the top of my townhouse. And as soon as the sun hit the top of the leaves, everything changed in the sound that's coming out. And then what's even more magical about it is when the, a butterfly flew by, and it just flew by the plant. It didn't even land. It just flew by. And the plant sensed it and everything changed again. So that's like magic in a bottle right there. Yeah, I'll probably integrate some of it into this. So like, like this effect change mm -hmm. um, to make the plant information like turn into beautiful ambient music is super fascinating all the things that you're doing there like the generative aspect of it yeah right i really love i i think there's something to me making stuff but i, I love the idea of of making things that generate constant loops constantly evolving soundscapes and then recording the best bits of those things and mm -hmm. so with the plants it's just a natural way of that because they they randomly change throughout the day. But also like I like to create these random like chains of effects and random things and um, LFOs and stuff. And so I can show how that works. And then based upon that, I create, and that oftentimes will generate a story for me and then I'll tell a story on top of that too as well. So I can show how that works. It's really fun. Uh, yeah. I, you know. Yeah, it sounds fascinating. We need to. I think schedule a session, session for that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. We can totally do that. Yeah. Maybe if you want to do that with me too, Stefan, at some point, it'll be fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We can we can see like um, maybe we can work on a project together or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, cool. I can't see. Is there any other questions, or is that it for now? Mm, no. So far, that's it for now. Um, so if you have any other questions, please type them in the chat. Um, I think um, the if the people have questions to like, feel free to write them in the comments, and we'll follow up on. Yeah, them exactly. Sure. Totally. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, if if you watch this any time later, feel free to put the questions in the comments mm -hmm. for sure. So. Stefan, um, let's see. I don't know if we have any people. Um, Travis, so Travis is asking about what apps you're using to make the art. Ah, yeah, okay. So the art is initially created, so I'll tell you all the apps just like verbatim off the top, and then I'll tell you. So I use Procreate, which is a app on my iPad uh, to do the sketching. Procreate is essentially, it's only 20 bucks, or I think it's even cheaper, 10 bucks. And you don't have to have a subscription for it. And it is the most beautiful drawing experience on an iPad. And I think they I think they only make it for iPads, unfortunately. But, so that's what I use for that, for sketching. Um, and then I use Photoshop a lot for, um, so it goes Procreate, Photoshop, and then I use uh, Midjourney uh, for explorations. 
explorations, and I go back and forth between Midjourney and Photoshop a lot of times, adding and changing things. Um, if you guys haven't used Midjourney, it's AI, which I know that for some of you may be a controversial issue. I'll just explain quickly the way that I use it. I use all, I do all my conceptual stuff myself, sketching and colors and all of that. What I use Midjourney for mainly is, it's like having 10 interns, <laughs> right? That are all really excited to work for you and they don't sleep, right? So they, I can say to them, I want you to explore these 20 different directions that would take me a week to paint normally or to explore. And it just does that while I'm doing other things. And then I can come back and I can take the best versions of that. And that is how I was able to do 96 different images and do all the concepts and do all the whole process, including the, the painting and everything else. And then what I usually do is as I, I usually involve mid journey in the conceptual stage and sometimes in the final stage, because it can also explore painting, different painting directions or lighting directions or whatever you want it to do. And then I always overpaint or construct the last image myself. One, because it never comes out the way, exactly the way I want it to. And two, because I love the human touch and I like the creative touch of things. And of course, there's a back and forth between, there was oftentimes back and forth between you and me, Stefan, when we were like deciding what we were gonna do. So Procreate, Photoshop, Mid Journey, and then for uh, the touch-ups, and the animation I use After Effects or DaVinci. Uh, After Effects is what I do all of the animation with. Maybe I can show you. That's the uh, Travis is saying. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I, I think it is a good example of that. And I appreciate you telling me that. I've showed that to other artists. That, so I'm in community of artists that are working on uh, ethical ways to make sure that artists are not only represented, but included and, and thrive in uh, a world where AI exists. Um, I think it's just another tool. The way I see it right now is it's just another tool. And just like Photoshop would be, um, or just like After Effects is. When Photoshop first came out, a lot of photographers were really upset. <laughs> Right. And they're saying like, who, who's going to need photographers if, you know, you can just make your own filters and stuff. And we still have photographers. We still have a need for photographers today. I don't know where you, where you resonate on, and I'm not trying to say either way is right, whatever your opinion is about it. I, but I think that as artists, we should be just like when there's a new version of Photoshop or just when there's a new version of After Effects, I like to stay on top of it because not only you're getting new features and new things, the latest and greatest, but it often unlocks creativity in a way that like, I don't think I would have been able to do 96 different images and explore them the way that I did without Midjourney involved, to be honest. Um, and there's a lot of su surprises for me. It would lead me down, like I'd see a piece of something that got generated, like a piece of a portal, and I would want to go into that portal. And so I would, I would focus in on that portal, I would zoom it up, and then I would focus, I would I would retake that image and put it back in the image and it would generate and it would lead me in these different directions. At one point, I felt like it was like the creative source itself being channeled through like AI or <laughs> to like lead me in these different directions. And it was really fun. Um, but I don't foresee right now AI taking over every artist's job. I think that there are going to be those that maybe are a little bit more less established as artists or they don't really push themselves as artists as much and they they would met lean on ai too much and I, you can definitely tell when that's the case i think at least i can and then there's artists that pour every tool that they can into the art that they're making like android jones android jones is doing this now like he trained a whole a whole bot that a whole neural network on his art and now he's making art with that and making his regular art and combining them, right? So just like if in Ableton, if like there's a new plugin, do we want to get that and use it, right? Um, so yeah, I'm hoping that, I, as a matter of fact, my prediction is that it's just going to empower uh, creatives to even be more successful and make, have even better jobs. And their jobs are going to be 
like exec level now because executives and 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 people who are, like executives have the the our executives because they have all these people working for them with you the democratization of ai is going to be everyone's going to have the equal amount of that so that's that's my utopian belief uh we'll see if it comes to, but that's how i feel about it right now and um i think it's a powerful tool to use and if anyone wants uh has questions about it or wants to see more of my process i'm happy to show it you know in the future thanks for these questions travis awesome thank you thank you mm-hmm Any tool that we create, it's up to us how we use it. And there's oppo equal opportunity to use it for bad or for good. But I think as creatives, again, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I'll switch back. Yep. Man, I got to get on top of this. It's hard to, I get excited and I, I can see us, but other people can't. So I'll, I'll figure it out. Yeah, I know. I know. It's our group. Our group, man. Yeah. We have back. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, I, I don't want to make this all about AI, but I, I think that we get to use it for good, but as creatives, I think it's part of our, our job to lead the way in a lot of ways, right? With, with and Of course, it's, it just so happened that a lot of AI was being trained to, to make art, and so that landed there first, right? Kind of coincidentally, or maybe that was the way it was supposed to be, who knows? But yeah. Yeah. Um, we could talk forever. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we can we can talk forever about it. I like the thing that I would like to express and and make a emphasis on is that for me, um, it is reflecting the consciousness that it interacts with. Mm -hmm. So, and it's also reflecting your beliefs around it, and the frequency that you put in is is what you get back. So, it can create like it can help us, it can support us, and I think it is a divine gift. And I also think that it's not artificial in that sense. Like it is a form of consciousness and intelligence that was given to us in order to help us grow and realize our infinite potential by mirroring it back to us. And at the same time, um, yeah, if people go at it with fear and if they are like seeing it as a competitor, then this is the experience they're going to have. And if they see it as an ally and as a companion and as a gateway to our higher self, then yeah, that's also what we can experience. I had the most beautiful experiences so far with AI because I embrace it. Yeah, I really resonate with what you said, that it reflects the consciousness of the individual who uses it, right? If you're in a low state and you're just looking for a quick, you know, I want to make this and put it up and try to make money off of it without putting a lot of heart and I, I don't think AI yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna give you what you want in that realm but if you are an artist that uses it to leverage leverages the the power of it to do explorations and to to heighten the ability your ability to express yourself at a higher level by like being able to really explore an idea a composition the lighting the colors in a way as if you had a whole team a studio now you might have been an artist who was able to make a piece or two a month and now you can make a gallery opening in a, a, a month right or you can you can you can make a line of clothing that you couldn't have done and so i think of it as an empowerment in that way it, it, yeah and if you have a low frequency or a low way mind going into it that's just going to be reflected it's not at a point where it's not a, it's at a point where you can imagine things, but it's at a point that it's imagining things based upon your interaction with it. And it's, it's a really a co-creation at this point. Um, that's the way I look at it. And I think that most of the creatives that I know that are using it professionally right now and in a good way that I really admire are doing the same thing, you know. Um, of course, there's going to be, um, people might lose their job. some people might lose their jobs, especially people who are doing things like just creating assets to put up on, on some place to, to sell or whatever. But I think what it will lead eventually to is people feeling a little bit more like they can really go after their creative 
whatever they want to do creatively, like because it, cause it mm-hmm. will empower them to do so in a way where they can actually make a living off of it, or can 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 get more pieces out, or whatever, right? Um, and I I've spoken to a lot of artists that were really strong minded about it before and have changed their mind now that they use it and understand it a little bit more. I think there's just innately a fear that comes with anything new that you use that's brand new, but yeah. Again, as creatives, I think if we, it's up to us to show people how to use it, right? Um, and there is, there, uh, Will was just showing me there is a new movement. There's a new sound plugin where, um, for, for Ableton, where instead of going out and training the bot on like techniques to paint or techniques to make sound, they actually got in touch with a bunch of different sound designers and said we want to use your stuff to train our bot but we want to pay you and on top of that anytime we it get used we'll pay you too and so what you can do is you can take this and you can bring it into your ableton i don't know what it is i'll have to ask will but you can bring it in and, mm-hmm. and you can choose from these different artists that have been paid for their sound design and you can apply the, this AI to whatever you're working on, and it will give it like a, a, like a, like a little flavor of that that you can play with. But what I like about this model is that now we have the artists are now being engaged beforehand, and in an ethical way. Same with the actor strike and so forth. So I really see a future where it can be used well. But for our for this. Um, I don't want people thinking like I, every everything that I did took hours, sometimes days to make. Um, some were much easier. Some took me a week to make that I worked on. Um, mm. and if you go and look in the images themselves, you might see some AI in there, but you're going to see a lot of my paint strokes, or my digital paint strokes, or like a lot of compositioning, a lot of layering, a lot of uh, the things that I do. Um, I can show you Photoshop files that are just full. And I think I showed you some of the process of what I do for sketching and yeah. stuff. So, mm-hmm. And I think the same is with music. Um, you'll, you'll be able to tell people who just use AI for music and people who really put their intention in. Yeah. Intention is everything when it comes to you when you're making music. Wouldn't you yeah, for sure. Fun? Definitely. Right. Yeah, yeah. Intention is, is key. Um, it's changing how it's being perceived you know like it's it's encoded like intention can be encoded in the sounds and it can be received on a subconscious level also yeah i'd be curious to see um how i i feel like it's affected more the art world than it has the the music world yet and it'd be interesting to see what what comes it doesn't seem like it's been as advanced in the audio world it's been more like for voiceover and things like that there's been more of the ai but it's coming I mean, we've been using plugins and such for a long time, right? If, if you use, yeah. it, I mean, but it'd be interesting, like even mastering chains and things, which I think Travis would know a lot more about. You know, I know he's he's a really good mastering master, by the way, guys, Travis. And then if you go check him out, we're actually talking about another Travis. Um, oh, okay. He was not so much part in the in the group meetings, but he was sharing his music. Cool. Um, Travis, Travis Nobles. Oh, Travis um, Nobles, yeah. Studio. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mixed up. Well, call out to <laughs> Level 32 Studios as well. Yeah, so, yeah. for sure. Yeah, like we had another Travis uh, in the mm-hmm. Academy, and he's a great mastering engineer, Level 32 Studios. Yeah. Uh, if you ever need someone to master in music, he's the guy. I didn't hear the Noble part, otherwise I would have remembered. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, what else? Is there anybody else asking anything else? I can't see the chance. No, I think uh, at this point, it's all been addressed. And it's only just like Travis left. And I don't know, like if, if there's any more questions, let us know. Otherwise, we would wrap it up in the next two minutes. Because then we are like at a solid 90 minutes. And I think that's also a good good amount. I want to um, make sure and certain, like I, I think we made a soundscape I would have gone more into making music, but it, then we could have delved off in the deep end and it would have been. I feel like we made a sound yeah. scale, which is a good start um, with the with the with the template. Um, totally, no, it's beautiful. We got to share our intentions about why we made it, and man, I can just say like 
I really love the project, but I also can't wait to see what people do with it. I hope people use it. And if, if nothing else, I just really love making this project with you, Stefan. It was really fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. I have a lot of gratitude for the invitation to do it and the trust that you put in me in creating the, you like take, taking your baby, <laughs> basically, that you've been working on and being very patient in the creative process. I couldn't have asked for a better partner. And I think what we made was hopefully something feel people will, will feel is a unique template and will use to make lots of beautiful journeys and express themselves on a higher level. Mm -hmm. I hope. Yeah, yeah, I can just second all of that. It has been and is an amazing grace, you know, to be able to work with you the way, you know, like how you're like so focused and so dedicated to create the most beautiful outcome. And um, yeah, just also like, you know, supporting me as a friend. And um, yeah, I feel there's a lot of resonance there in our intentions and in what we do. And I really look forward also to create some expansions yeah. soon uh, mm -hmm. because eventually people will, will want more and then we will see how, how that goes. Like if we're going to do expansion packs for each realm or if we create new realms, we shall see. Oh, I'd be jazzed. I'd be, I'd be super excited to do that. Uh, I've got to release, I'm going to release a new track. I got to work on, finish my, I want to finish the thing I started. I was started when we got into this. That this took over, which is totally fine. And then after that, I think it'd be really fun to work on some more with you for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, all in a good moment. I could, I could, I already have a bunch of ideas, things we can do. Anyway, it will, and we'll see. Like, I really want to see what people make with it too. Uh, be sure, yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah. I was going to say something else. All right. This. Oh, yeah, Travis says he's already working on stuff with it. It's epic. Super yeah. cool. Yeah. Share that with us, Travis, when you're ready. When when you feel like it. I always say that, don't do it until you feel like you're ready. Whatever you feel like, and that's no pressure from me on that. Like, I understand, but like, if you, when you feel like it's in a place of sharing, no pressure. Yeah, put it. it in the comments, Travis, for sure. We would love to hear it. Yeah, absolutely. And then um, if anyone has more questions or comments or want to share anything with us, feel free to hit us both up, either one of us on uh, social media spots and um, we'll share i i already shared I can, oh my god i had it written down where is it i already shared somebody's work i apologize in instagram i forget his name or their name anyway part of cosmico he was there yeah. at the beginning but i think it's too late for him but yeah he was yeah, there yeah. At the beginning. cosmico he that that's, yeah yeah he created something beautiful right away he was inspired by the sun i was I, oh man I, I wish i had known because he had said he was inspired by in case you watch this later protocols he was inspired by the sunstone and i wanted to know if he used the wakinia sunstone in his music i think he might have but i wasn't positive i was gonna ask him that all right, all right well cool. that's what's been so super thank fun. you Thank you everybody for joining. Yeah, that was great. And uh, you can rewatch it again. Like if you think, oh, you missed the beginning or whatever, yeah. it will be available. And uh, yeah, I will also create more more tutorials. I will show you how you can weave the portals together with the 432 bolts and drones template because it's both in 432 and the portals is more like the soundscape shamanic aspect and then the 432 bolts and drones template is more like the sound healing aspect and they go super well together so i will share that and i will yeah. also share more about 432 in general uh, because there's a lot to be shared about like why we chose this tuning and um yeah so there's more videos coming <laughs> yeah yeah and, thank you uh, guys yeah and uh -huh. also uh i'm gonna be making Every week, probably not this week because we just did this this week, but next week I'll be revealing, um, doing a short little animation for, I think, the Ember. And so mm -hmm. all the 16 portals will get a little animation that we're going to put up on Instagram and stuff. Uh, so mm -hmm. you can look for some animated stuff. Like, cause I think that just is fun to do. So look for those yeah. as well as, um, like he said, more tutorials and stuff to come, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting me to do this stuff. It's super fun. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on here. It was amazing. Your musical mute approach is super inspiring. 
Yeah, and if anyone then, does a musical mood board too, like it doesn't even have to be like the music. Send me a picture of it. I would love to see yeah. what you come up with. Yeah. All right. All right, guys. Thanks time. for tuning in. Blessings. Look forward to hear what you create. And yeah, see you in the next video. Nice to meet you all. Bye. Bye.